起来，不愿做奴隶的人们，把我们的血肉铸成我们新的长城。中华民族到了最危险的时候，每个人背负着化作最后的吼声，起来，起来。After the proclamation of the Chinese Republic in 1911, the former empire descended into chaos. Local warlords filled the void while Chiang Kai-shek tried to reunite China under the banner of the Kuomintang Nationalist Party, better known as KMT. One of the most remarkable of these warlords was Ma Zhongying and his Muslim army, who would eventually be known as the 36th National Revolutionary Division. Ma Zhongying was born in 1910 in the province of Gansu in a family of soldiers. At age 14, he joined the local Muslim militia. Ma belonged to the so-called Hui minority, which are Han Chinese who are Muslims. They are not to be confused with the Muslims in Xinjiang, which are of Turkic origin, also known as Uyghurs. Uyghurs make up the majority of the population in Xinjiang at the time. Hui Muslims are a minority in Gansu and have communities in every big city in China. They are appreciated for their delicacies, like lanzhou beef noodle, but I digress. Ma would quickly rise within the ranks and become a proper warlord, just like his uncles, which he would fight on the battlefield, by the way. Ma was also a Chinese nationalist and joined the KMT Academy in Wampao during his exile from Gansu in 1929. He returned to Gansu around 1930 to create his own army. In 1931, Ma's army in Gansu counted approximately 15,000 men and was the most disciplined army in the region. Ma led his men, which were all cavalrymen, Drill every day, which was quite exceptional in China at the time. He also drove his men to the limits by training in sub-zero temperatures. Last but not least, the men were trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, like fencing and fighting with sticks. By comparison, Mao Zedong and his men were at that time nothing more than a band of roving bandits. In 1932, Ma's army was officially recognized by the KMT Armed Forces and incorporated as the 36th Division. This has probably to do with the size of Ma's army and not so much with any formal divisional organization. It was for example not clear whether the division was equipped with artillery. The soldiers also didn't wear the KMT blue uniforms, but had their own green uniforms with a KMT white sun armband. The creation of the 36th Division took place in the context of the so-called Kumul Rebellion. This was a conflict between Ma Zongying and Jin Shu Ren. Jin was the governor of Xinjiang on behalf of KMT, but was actually a puppet of the Soviet Union. The KMT wanted him removed for that reason, and secretly supported Ma to remove Jin. This led to the invasion of Xinjiang by Ma's troops. This conflict was further complicated by the separatist rebellion of the Uyghurs and the intervention of the Soviet Union in Xinjiang in the following years. The first major battle for mass troops was in 1931 at Kumu, a town just over the border with Gansu, which he besieged. Ma was however not successful despite his initial gains and even became severely wounded himself. In 1933, he attempted another invasion of Xinjiang and almost managed to capture the provincial capital of Urumqi. The 36th Division was already in the city as the sudden appearance of massive reinforcements of the enemy forced his troops to retreat. The cause of this retreat were 1,800 professional Russian troops of the Tsarist émigré Colonel Papagut. The so-called white Russians tipped the balance in Urumqi. 
The irony was that the white Russian soldiers were used by the Soviet Union as proxies to keep their hold on Xinjiang. In the winter of 1933-1934, the 36th Division again invaded Xinjiang in a bid to capture the capital. This time their discipline and winter training paid off and they captured Urumqi and this time even the white Russians could not make the difference. The Soviet Union was forced to intervene and this led to the Battle of Dutong River in a bid of the Ma troops to hold the Soviet invasion of Xinjiang. The Battle of Dutong was very uneven as the Soviets threw in everything they had in their inventory. Infantry, artillery, tanks, bombers and even mustard gas. Casualties were heavy on both sides. But General Ma managed to extract his force intact for a retreat to southern Xinjiang. Ma's forces had nevertheless withstood the might of the modern Soviet army for several weeks. The 36th Division withdrew south to Kashgar but managed to inflict painful losses on the better equipped Soviets. In one encounter they defeated a whole column of Soviet armored cars without any heavy equipment of their own. After a while the Soviets had enough of these ambushes stopped their advance and retreated back to the Soviet Union. Ma had not defeated the Soviets in open battle, but he had prevented the Soviet resupply of his local enemies in Xinjiang. Meanwhile, the 36th Division was also quelling the Uyghur Rebellion, which was supported by officers from Turkey. A garrison of Ma in Kashgar fended off many attacks by more numerous Uyghur forces. In April, 1934, this garrison was finally relieved by the main body of the 36th Division in a battle for Kashgar, which caused thousands of casualties for the rebels. The rebellion was quelled, but the threat of the Soviet invasion was still looming. In the summer of 1934, the commanding general of the 36th Division, Ma Zongying, disappeared, reportedly when he went to the Soviet Union. Until this very day it is not known what happened to him. The loss of this charismatic and professional 24-year-old divisional commander was a very heavy blow for the division. The division had nevertheless become one of the crack divisions within the Chinese army. A testament to the trust of Chiang Kai-shek in this unit was the fact that it was slated in the first batch of eight divisions which were trained and equipped as a German-style division in 1937. Before it had completed its retraining and re-equipment, it was committed in the Battle of Shanghai and was rated among the best Chinese divisions in this battle. In summary, the Chinese National Revolutionary 36th Division originated as a warlord outfit in the 1920s composed of the Hui minority. Its young general Ma Zongying whipped his army into exceptional outfit of well-disciplined and trained soldiers. It performed beyond expectations when confronted with heavily armed professional Russian troops and numerically superior Uyghur rebels. It was strictly speaking not an elite unit because its members were largely drafted and even pressed into service, but it was certainly a remarkable unit. The upgrade into a full German style division was certainly a sign that the division was regarded among the best in the Chinese army at the time. If you like my content, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to get notifications for new content.